I'm Mark Emery from Vancouver, British Columbia. I was extradited and convicted to five years in prison in the United States for selling pot seeds. This is letter to my wife, dearest Jody, last Thursday in Nevada Southern Detention Center, a guard said, Emery, roll up, which meant I was outbound. I was taken with about 100 others to a series of tiny cells, where I waited 17 hours, to be chained with leg irons and handcuffs secured to a chain around my stomach, then put on a bus to Las Vegas airport. We were at the airport at 7 a.m., but the con airplane didn't arrive till around 10.30 a.m. Still in chains, we were boarded onto the plane at around noon. I was the only Canadian. The plane first flew to Arizona and landed to let off prisoners going to Arizona federal prisons and picked up more prisoners. Then, still chained, we flew to Oklahoma City, the processing hub of the Bureau of Prisons, where we arrived around 5.30 p.m. Central Time and were unchained during intake. That was over 12 hours being chained up, often to another prisoner. Intake took about six hours of mostly monotonous waiting, and by Friday at midnight I was one person in a two-man cell at El Reno, Oklahoma processing. It took 36 hours from roll-up to arrival in my cell here, a grueling experience. I have been here six days now, and may be shipped off any day toward my new designated privately run prison, D. Ray James Correctional Facility in Folkestone, Georgia. It's an immigration and naturalization services low security federal prison for deportable aliens, which are non-US citizens. It used to be a state prison, but was closed and taken over by the prison industry giant, Geo Group. I was supposed to be sent to Taft FCI in California, but the Bureau of Prisons has changed it to send me as far away from you as possible. Still, I really would like to get there so I can receive my mail, my magazine subscriptions, do my transfer application back into the Canadian correctional system, and most of all, get visits from you every other weekend. I miss you more than anything in this hard and tough existence. I have been in prison 8 months now, and it's only because of you that I have made it. Your visits to me will stretch across as long a path across America as is possible, Vancouver to Seattle, to Jacksonville, Florida, then a drive north into Georgia from there. The visits are going to be like at SeaTac, so we can hold hands, and I can kiss you at the beginning and end of the visit, and they may even be all day visits from what I can deduce, so I'm so excited to be able to do that. Your letters to me of November 11th, 12th and 13th are so wonderful in the detail you put in. They are like listening to you talk to me in loving words and details across the universe in perfect clarity. Many times, like now, when I think of you and our great love, I want to break down and cry and I often do, but you reassure me when you can, and I pull myself together and pray for the better times ahead when we are reunited once again. Eight months in prison is a long and very challenging experience, but so far I have gotten through it. I hope that in 12 months from now I'm in Canada, getting released on parole as the law today would apply, and able to be home with you for Christmas. For that to happen I need political support in Canada and the US for approval from both the US Department of Justice and the Canadian Ministry of Public Safety. I'm hoping former New Mexico Governor Gary Johnson and Texas Congressman Ron Paul will endorse our request for my return to Canada, along with other congressmen and legislators in America, in addition to the many Canadian public officials who are already signatories to these two letters. Jody, I know you will do all you can for me to get home. I hope you will be visiting me soon. My dearest wish is to see you. To my sweetest love, to my great soulmate, Jody from your husband, Mark, 